guys, how are you doing? Evening. Richard, how are you? I'm terribly well, thank you. Extremely thank you well. So much for joining us tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm I love so it. So excited. I, oh dear, you should get out more. <laughs> I, do you know? I had to go shopping tonight after work, so I, I'd missed the horrible histories. So oh, I, yeah, I, I, I was well. really unhappy. I was like, I can't believe this. I don't finish well, it till six o'clock. Go back on it, can't you? I think you can. Watch oh, yeah, it, I will. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I watch it. Yeah definitely watch it yeah, back it went well as usual i mean people you know love it people love i, I, I was saying actually earlier I, perhaps i need to change the name because obviously there are you know the, i don't know whether i'm standing on anybody's feet here because obviously the books and everything called horrible history the tv perhaps it should just be history the juicy bits <laughs> mm. but it's not got the same we, ring to it though has it no horrible history and that's what people that's what that's what sells history to people absolutely the juicy, the juicy bits the horrible bits the, absolutely you know, that's we all want. That, that, that's, that's what people like oh yes i like yeah. it too i i do like it but then no, I, no, i'm no, into that, blood guts yeah. and gore anyway so no yeah, matter what you say people are always that bit. <laughs> yeah everyone likes it that's why everyone slows up when there's an accident on the motorway absolutely that's why everyone gathers around when there's a fight we shouldn't really we sh i'm yeah. sat here smiling and i really it. shouldn't smile but it's so true yeah, they're not trying to stop it are we the fact go on, give them another one Kick people on. people will do exactly the same as what i do here because the minute i see something like that so say there's an accident on the road or i'm looking for a house number and this is the bit that i don't think i'll ever understand it don't matter how many courses i take in psychology i'm never going to understand this but i turn my stereo down so i can see better <laughs> well there you are yeah that's it's because you really want to get a good view as, and, and we you all just do. want to focus right the, the only thing that it does bother me <clears throat> now is is the number of people and there was a, 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 a one a few oh year a couple of years ago a guy was being stabbed on the on the underground and this at the end of it he was all right but this bloke came up to him and patted him he says don't worry mate i've got it all on film and i think that's <sighs> terrible rather than going to help him yeah, sure. too, much, too, much, too much of that goes on nowadays because you see yeah. these these youngsters are doing it as well because they're they're if someone's getting beat up it's like someone put a, a video on the other night of a police officer in london getting beaten up by a, a black guy on the ground and just stood right. around we're filming him oh filming, filming it happened it. yeah oh, yes oh, no one helping it's uh it's gone the other way unfortunately but don't know, mm. yeah i don't I'm think afraid. i'd film it i don't think that that's not my style well, i would turn my stereo down so i could see better but i yeah. definitely <laughs> wouldn't film it. no basically you should drop the phone and and and, and, and help yes yeah, stop help, it yeah. mm. help but we don't do that you see we walk we see, well i think there's so oh, much violence these days that it's unreal anyway well, you, yeah but there's there's it's always been there it has it's, really it's just it's just more more notified these days because it's on okay. the news and it's on social media so it's yep. just it just spreads like wildfire now doesn't it yep yep i mean the the viking attack on on the village uh didn't really get publicized in the way that the, the same thing with, you know what i mean now that's yeah, yeah. different there was no facebook to spread the word you no, see no nothing no or other social no. networking platforms are available uh, uh, yes <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> Quite something. Honestly, Quite something. it's ridiculous. So, Richard, let's get yes. nitty gritty about Richard then. Go on then. So, Richard, where did it all start for you? I mean, obviously, you you're not just an author. You are not just a historian. You are not just um, a, a, a paranormal investigator. No, there there is no. so many different layers to you. With, with the real, real. Please, please stand up. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I don't know where. I mean, uh, I mean, for well, thirty years, thirty years as a record dealer, um, selling records to pop records to, to kids of Derby. Um, uh, nine years in the Territorial Army uh, as a soldier. Um, uh, cancer at the age of eighteen. Terminal cancer at the age of eighteen. That was fifty-one years ago. Um, the, and I'm now still people here. are getting the calculators out now. Yeah, right. exactly. I was seventy-one. Oh, God help me. God. 21 plus VAT, I love you now. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Absolutely. Um, so that was then, the point, the well, cancer point was the bit for you, wasn't it, that, that dramatically changed your outlook on life, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Oh God! Oh, it, there's no getting away from that. Yeah, um, and and it, I'm sure there's so many people out there, you know, would would say the same thing that that have been through it. Um, it completely changes your life. It changes your outlook on life and makes you realise that life's so precious, and it's there for living. Mm. And, and you've really got to cram in as much as you possibly can because you know times are ticking all the time and when you're told you know uh that your life expectancy is going to be cut down dramatically um that then you know obviously the first thing i mean i was lucky you know i was one of the lucky ones that you know i survived and i'm still here um but it, it yeah it's um it's a game changer there's no I mean, it, it's just it, you, when you when you get told the news such as you did, so you know you were you was told you had terminal cancer. Yes, yes. So that's game over. Well, it was. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's the sort of thing, especially at that age. And it's the sort of thing you used to see on the telly. And Absolutely. you know, it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't happen to me. It never mm. never happens to you. And I love it. My I laughed at my doctor because it's. He said, this, Richard, this is not a laughing matter. I said, no, no, but you're, you're kidding me. No, he said, no, no, I mean it. And all I said to him, don't tell my mum and dad, will you? Oh. Yeah. It, 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 must, it, must have, it must have been a shock at that, that age, though, to be told yeah. that you've got terminal cancer. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. There's no getting away from it. Um, but you, you get on with it. and you, you know. I mean, let's face it, even, even when you're told it, you still think... Nah, mm. No, nah, it's not going to happen to me. And okay, it didn't. Um, it could have done, but you, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's this, um, and it does. It's, of course, and you still, for the rest of your life, you still think, you know, will it? Will what it if? Could it? And I don't think it's going to come back now. You know, you know, but you yeah. also think you you fear it for years. Oh, absolutely! I can imagine. I mean, I've, I've touch wood. Yeah. I've never. Yeah, it's quite to go a, that, so. a game changer, big time. But hopefully, you know, you, I won't. Say, it, it alters your outlook on life, and that's it's obviously Ooh. altered mine big time. But you know, I, I li live life to the full. Oh, Enjoy it, absolutely. guys. Absolutely. You know, so, so after that, that, so after that horrible news and mm. the fear of what if, mm. um, you're saying it changed your your outlook on life and your perception. Um, mm. How did it change it? So. Could you see yourself going in a different direction if it hadn't have been for the the cancer news? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, possibly. Not. Well, you see, the, the, the unfortunately, the, the the direction that I was going, wanted to go big time, was to, to join the army. Mm -hmm. uh, all I have, my life, um, my life. What's the word? I'm looking. <sighs> I can't think of the word. I live military history. Um, battles, soldiers, swords, guns, uh, uniforms. That, that, you know, all I did as a kid was play soldiers uh, with soldiers, you know, toy soldiers, fighting. So it's all, I mean, the, 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 the earliest recollection of school, because I loathed, hated and despised school from the day I, from the day they forced me to go till the day I forced them to let me leave. I, just, <laughs> I know, and I hated it. Um, and I think I was there two days and I'd got my, my cowboy hat and my two, two guns with me. And after a second day, my guns were confiscated. <laughs> Not allowed. Well, that was the end of the world for Richard Felix, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, Whoa, I'll have to get a stick. No, you're not allowed sticks. What? <laughs> no. We have, we have to use our fingers like this. And I said, But that's not the same. That was, I was only four. <laughs> well, I still use my fingers on a Saturday yeah. night when Brand. I've had one too many gym, gins, yeah. to be fair, Richard. Yeah, still yeah. do it now. Yeah, so that so, was so uh, your ambition was to join the army. So, yeah, did, big time. Did, did your diagnosis <laughs> slow that down? Yeah, oh, totally. That's the trouble. Yeah, because basically, I was cured right there very quickly. Um, I, I developed it in, in uh, October, mm -hmm. uh, and they came to me on my 19th birthday. I was in St. Thomas's Hospital in London. Uh, on my they came to me in the ward on my 19th birthday to tell me that I was cured, or oh, sorry, that it was in remission. And that was February the 23rd. So from October to from October to February, that was it, and I was cured. I, I went down, you see, I was lucky, because my doctor had a big pal who'd been at medical school with him at St. Thomas's Hospital in London. And he was running the um, this cancer research department down there. And he got me down there from Derby. 
And I went every day on the train for five weeks, every morning at 10 past nine to St. Thomas's Hospital uh, for radiotherapy treatment. And then back home by, I was, I was back at work at 20 past three every day. <laughs> you must have been exhausted. I was. I was. I was knackered. Sorry. How did you I, even? How did you even manage to 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 do it? I mean, well, that was my dad. You see, we've got to, got to be. You see, my dad had the record business right. record shop, too, and and he was a hard taskmaster, to say the least. And I was back at work, <laughs> but I was I was not in a very good state. I was burnt because oh, I had radiotherapy all over my neck, my throat, my back, my chest, and I was burnt. Like mm. I used to have to have this lotion. On. Yeah, but and I. I I used to wear a cravat <laughs> to, to hide the burns all over my throat. You know. But I was still back at work at 20 past three. Um, yeah, That's I, mental on its own. Yeah, it was. Mm. It was. But the, so power, the power of Richard I, Felix. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So basically then, obviously, as soon as I'm cured, uh, that's it. I, I'm going to, I want to join the army. Um, now, I'd left school at 15 with nothing because uh, I'd been ill. I'd been ill before that. <laughs> I had another... Um, mm disease called Hirschsprung's disease before honestly man uh, so i didn't have a t i didn't have teenage years at all um and um then i met my wife was well, julia who obviously i'm married to now but um she said suggested that i don't just join the army you you you, you should be an officer well to be an officer you needed five o levels well i hadn't got any so she got me to back to tech to do five O level, two five GCSEs, um, and then when I got them, then I applied to join the army, um, and I got as far as the medical, and by by mistake, I told them what I'd had. <laughs> oh no 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 no! no. Oh, we can't. <laughs> you know. I said, but I'm cured. I'm cured. Here's, you can bring my doctor in London. No 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 no. No, and and basically my world collapsed. God, I can imagine. Be because. I couldn't, so I had to go back to selling records, <laughs> which I love doing, don't get me wrong, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted uh, a commission in the army and I wanted to be a soldier. Um, and then I said to them, to the doctors, I said, well, I'll go and join the Territorial Army then. Yeah, part time. Yeah. No, hmm. no, they won't, have you, they won't have you there either, because basically if the balloon goes up, if there's a war or anything, <laughs> you, will, you will, you know, you would be you would become a, a proper a proper soldier you know? mm -hmm. and we'd have to give you uh, a pension if you if you get if it came back again yeah uh, so i wasn't mm -hmm. even allowed but of course what i did i gave it a couple of years and then applied to join the territorial army and well well that was easy because all you had to do was go and see a local gp for yeah. a medical and uh, exactly. anything anything no nothing wrong at all no what's that, oh, that little, what's that scar on you know oh I, that was a little operation i had there um right okay <laughs> cough um can you pee in that bottle i said no not from here you have to get it down um, <laughs> can you and, bring it uh, closer i can't yeah, read yeah and um you're in and then i joined the ta for nine years um <coughs> as, as captain which was wonderful but it was it's not the same it was not it's not the same as no what i wanted to do it's it's not quite your dream no no it wasn't but well, uh, did, did, it, it, did it did it um i don't know did it did it make up for not quite getting yeah. your dream yeah oh god yes yes it did there's no getting away from it yeah i mean it, the it one did. thing that none of us ever <laughs> want is is to leave this earth with any regrets isn't it so that's true and yeah. i'm guessing that would have been a huge one for you oh yes oh god yes absolutely yeah and i had a, an incredible time in the territorial army for nine years really did it was absolutely uh, tremendous um so that was that was great then back to records obviously well selling records at the same time um i think i was the only ta shopkeeper i'd ever met well i, I tell you selling records now is a big thing oh god yeah, yeah wrong with that i did i used to do that as well really yeah i used to work in a record shop well, That's, it, it could only sell oh god what size were the little ones seven inch it could seven only inch, sell seven singles. inch because he couldn't pick up a big one <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, have, you, have you met Dave in real life, Richard? I'm not sure. Yeah, you see we, us. Yeah. We, 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 you came to Derby Jail, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Last year. Say again. It's last year, wasn't it? I know it was. Yeah, it wasn't long ago. Yeah. 
That's right. I'll put the glasses on, then I'll recognise you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, right. it's frightening because, yeah, there you go. Of course. I, I, <laughs> I know where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the screen now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, You're better off taking them off, Richard, to be fair. Yeah. Then then what happened? No, so that, that was it. Then I became chairman of Derby Tourism. Tours, and opened a heritage centre in an old Tudor grammar school that was very haunted, that featured on Most Haunted, and I started doing ghost walks. And that's when the... the, 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 the so how, the did, first, you know. how did the ghost walks come about? How did... Yeah. Have you always had a fascination in the afterlife? I've always been frightened of ghosts. <laughs> always. I still am. What, really. what, makes you, what, makes you, what makes you scared of them? Uh, well, nothing happened. Nothing happened until I was 27. In the ter territorial army, funny enough, um, I, I used to play with kids that were older than me, um, and they used to terrify me with ghost stories. Uh, used to they always get into this rather large rabbit hutch and close the door, and they got a German bayonet in there from the First World War. <clears throat> they said got blood on it and it killed people, and the ghost of the soldier that was killed would be there outside. And, and then they told me that when I got home and went to bed, the green ghost would be waiting for me at night, standing at the foot of my bed. I'd, I'd obviously got a rather vivid imagination. Uh, they also used to lock me in the garage. And I, I can see myself now. I can see myself now banging on the door saying, let me out. And I'm saying, you're not going out. You're staying here. Your mum and dad are dead. Um, so they were, you know, they're a bit cruel. And I obviously was impressionable to say that. And it terrified me. It didn't Richard, frighten me. It you was abused, me. love. You was absolutely was abused. abused. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But I'm talking, when I say frightened, it's, it's a total understatement. I'm talking about terrified of what was going to happen, what was going to be stood at the foot of the bed in the middle of the night. And of course, it never happened. Because it doesn't happen like that, as you know, only too well. Um, in an um, ideal world, that'd be perfect, right? Yeah, mm. wouldn't it just, eh? Hey? But yeah. it, it wasn't like that. Nothing happened to me. So, so it was nothing that escaped. It was just purely that. But it's still there. Honest so God, how, did, how did the ghost walks come about then? Yeah, yeah. You were so, terrified, absolutely well, terrified. terrified of... So I suppose I've had a fascination because of it, I, I presume, I don't know. There's something there at the back of your mind because, because you've lived with it. You've lived with the fear of, of ghosts. That's the word, ghosts, you know, that's the thing. And then um, being chairman of Derby Tourism... <clears throat> um, and having a ghost in this heritage centre that luckily I never saw, I'm very pleased to say, um, I thought, well, how are we going to attract people to come to the city of Derby? <laughs> well, York do ghost walks. Uh, Chester do ghost walks. Mm. Why don't I try a ghost walk? Uh, and I, I, I did the first ghost walk in January 1993. Didn't like it. Thought, ah, this is rubbish. <laughs> this, I mean, this, is, yeah, this is absolute. Oh, and the faces of the three men that were murdered. Nobody was by. Every time the wind blew in the churchyard, you could see the three faces of the three men, and the trees were waving. And you could hear the words justice in the. And I'm like, this is rubbish. You know, um, so if I'm going to do it, I've got to believe in it. Absolutely. And, and so I stopped. And I did that one. Everybody loved it, thought it was great. Uh, I didn't. Um, and um, I, I spent the next six months um, with a local medium um, who is one of the, I still believe, probably the one of the most genuine, real mediums I've ever met. His name's Wayne Anthony. Uh, he's the seventh son of a seventh Irish, blah, 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 ginger hair, you know, all that sort of stuff. And he, he knew a lot about ghosts and a lot about ghosts in Derby, an awful lot. And I learned a lot from him. We actually co-wrote the first book we did together. I did. It's called Ghost of Derby uh, in 1995. Him and me. Your, your books, you see, that's something else. I mean, it's not like you've got one or two, is it, Richard? Oh, I've done 11. You yeah, are 11. a prolific writer. Yeah, 11, 11 ghost books. Uh, 41 DVDs, or videos of ghosts of Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Northern Ireland, Scotland, South Wales, North Wales. East West, <laughs> um, yeah, 41 DVDs up to now. Of, of 41 counties of Great Britain, uh, right, it's just mental. On, on DVD, yeah, it's it, it, surely finding the time must be difficult because alongside it, this, it you've still got like your day job as well. Yeah, I'm still what well, goes well. Actually, well, funnily enough, when you say day job, I'm a bit like Dracula, 
I come out at night. I work at night most of the time, doing ghost ghost events, ghost walks, two three nights a week. Uh, I used to do a Leicester ghost walk, Chester ghost walk, York ghost walk, Ashbourne ghost walk, Chesterfield ghost walk, Derby ghost. <laughs> I've stopped them. I only do Derby now. Um, you see, Derby's got lots of history, though, hasn't it? Oh, I mean, tons, 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 tons. Yeah, that's the big one. And you see, me being chairman of Derby Tourism, I I started um, Christ Almighty um, thirty years ago, starting to to research into the, the the incredible history of the city, with a view to history and heritage. And tourism, you know, heritage tourism is, is a huge industry, you see. And tie it with ghosts, which is what they do, mm -hmm. then it, com it comes alive or or, or not. Uh, do, you find, do you find that when writing your books, do they almost write themselves? Because you love the history, so you absorb all that information like a sponge. Um, yeah. And yeah. you just soak it up. So then does the book just flow and write itself? Mm, I'm not a natural. No, I'm not a natural... See, that surprises me, because I've read your books. I'm a storyteller, uh, but I'm not a natural writer. Well, sorry, I put... You see, my wife <laughs> plays hell with me, because the way I write isn't or isn't isn't how books should be written, is what she keeps telling me, because she was a teacher, you know. Uh, and, and, so and you I, see, I, I get this. To... I get where your wife's coming from, because... Um, I... I study psychology at Derby University. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I study psychology and I'm not yeah. a natural writer. So yeah. I find it so hard to write in an academic style, which is what they yeah. want. Yeah, but I know. Yet, I don't. For, for the likes of us, it, it would be a wonderful read. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I, I can't think. Well, because uh, I'm doing the, the, late, the latest book, The People's Ghost Book um which i'll tell you about in a minute um i would suddenly i would suddenly start a sentence with but <laughs> because that's how i that's how i do it. or i would suddenly come up with well come on then and a uh, question and, and, and then start what i'm going to say next because that's the way i do it I I found really thing you know that's how I'd put it you see I, I, I found tell you the word I write it however like yeah yeah I write I it like, like I say it yeah I do too and and I I don't know I don't know whether people like it or not nobody's really said but uh, you know Julia tries very hard to edit edit me out <laughs> 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 I I I, 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 yeah, I haven't so and so you can't put haven't you've got to put have not yes. No, 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 I haven't got to do that at all. <laughs> no, I'm right. Well, what I, I want to write. Yeah, because um, that's how I say it. So, I mean, that you first started writing, I mean, I could be wrong here, um, mm. but was it for the Derby Telegraph when you oh, first gosh. started writing? Yeah, that was. It's only a few years 19, ago, that Richard, 19, isn't it? 19, 1990. And uh, they, they asked me to start doing a thing called. Uh, personal property it was called of derby and basically what i did was I took a building and wrote about it but for me writing about the building isn't isn't telling you about the sandstone pedimented architraves around the door and the Kuiper sandstone sash windows. Oh, come on, you, you, you've lo I've lost you already. I've lost it. You know, uh, I'm I'm interested in bricks and mortar, so long as they've got flesh and blood with them. And it's not just the building; it's who lived there, yeah, who died there, who was born there, who invented something there, who was murdered there. Who stories, there. yeah, the stories of the land. That's where the building comes alive, in my I mean, opinion. The, let's go on to the bit now, because we can't really avoid it forever, I suppose. But the, the yeah. one the one bit where that we have in common, Richard, is yeah. um, most haunted. MH. MH. <laughs> now, you did come alive through most haunted, you know. Oh, yeah. when, I mean, it's one thing reading it. 
but to actually see you and how excited because <laughs> although you say you know you were scared of ghosts and you was nervous etc the excitement that would come from you mm -hmm. when watching those episodes i loved it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 that, that's the only reason why i watched it yeah enthusiasm is the word apparently uh henry ford said with enthusiasm you can do anything and i do have one big attribute and it's called enthusiasm oh, I, I don't know why help. i really don't know i don't know why where um but i was very shy as well as a kid uh very frightened shy kid as i say uh that but will yeah, be the I, use, I, richard I, sorry that will be the abuse that you had to endure yeah probably yeah <laughs> but yeah but yes I, I i do get i enjoy what i do i suppose i think that's that's really what it's all about and that might be going back to what happened to me you know enjoy it but you know on, on the show i i you see to me ghosts and history are, are the two that they go together um if you, gel, I can't prove, yeah i can't prove the ghosts i can prove the history and if i can if I can, which I did on the show, you see, they, they referred to me as a historian, mm. but I said, no, you're wrong. You've got me wrong. I, I, I am a paranormal historian. Yes. I believe that I, the history of ghosts, if you like, but I believe that ghosts and history go together. Mm. Um, and, and if you can add, in other words, if we were going around all day, so there's a, there's a gray lady in there and there's a blue lady up there and there's a poltergeist over there and, and there's um, a crisis apparition that appeared in that bedroom. Yeah, okay, well, so another ghost, another ghost, another. Yeah, but if you can actually prove, try and prove who the ghost is, Absolutely. why the ghost's still there. And, well, what? you hit it on the head there with that yeah. one that one statement, the crisis apparition. Yeah. Not a lot of people actually know what a well, crisis apparition is. No, of course they don't, because because most haunted that's been on for i, I don't I should is it 20 years oh i just I don't think know. they never taught anybody anything about what goes to song no that's no, a big one and i say to people every time i start with saying yeah thank you most haunted for what you've done for me oh absolutely thanks yeah. a lot you've done my profile the world of good um and when i joined on series one and i thought this was going to be a good ghost it was a good mm. ghost it, do you know what I mean, nobody ghosts. can take away the credit i mean no. would i watch most haunted now absolutely not no um, way jose <laughs> absolutely not and and i don't no. think carl and yvette would even be bothered that i've said that i'm, I'm not no. going to expect a letter from the solicitor anytime soon I, for saying I don't that so. I don't no think so. i think no. i'm fine but yeah i wouldn't watch it now but no. back in the day I mean, you've yeah. got the only thing that was even remotely similar um, was Ghost Watch. It was new. It yeah. was fresh. That's right. That's right. That's right. But the and only course, problem is it's not so new and fresh now, is it? No, of course not. No. And everybody's followed it. But basically, I thought it was going to be a, a doc, not documentary at all, but I thought it was going to reveal to people try and you know about ghosts which of course it didn't it, de it degenerated into scooby-doo basically mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, yeah. yeah and i say to everybody did you actually learn i say i say you the ghost hunting public out there did you actually learn any more about what a ghost was from watching most haunted well in and fact they all go they, no. well, we've just asked it now richard is has asked that question so everybody that is watching i will give you all um shout outs later so please don't think i'm ignoring you and i've written your questions down so i will ask richard <laughs> but you guys in the chat room by all means answer that question that richard's just asked yeah. did you learn anything that you can transfer and use for yeah. actual investigations please comment from most haunted can you now explain to me the stone tape theory what a crisis apparition is what a harbinger of death is what a screaming skull is well uh, i'll just keep going Fr from watching the show no <laughs> no that's the problem all i can tell you is they're all demons they're all going to get us later on in the show they throw things <laughs> they scratch you they throw you downstairs they pull you upstairs with the help of a rope um and, and Oof, yeah sounds like a on. film i watched recently that yeah in fact, exactly. um, in fact just just mentioning that that rope there there's uh somebody in the in the chat room this evening a lovely guy by the name of uh, chris hunt him and his lovely wife uh jane did uh a little a little action replay shall we say and a dub of it it was hilarious i shall find you it and send you both it 
Hmm. What's happened? Have we lost you? So you have you used to break sex But so but I still pat them on the back and say, Well done guys, because you set the scene. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. We wouldn't be here now. No. If it wasn't for most haunted. The guys out there listening. Yeah, they they they, 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 they they put it on the map, didn't they? Yeah, they put when it they on the first map. Up. And and I I congratulate them for that. I really well, genuinely do. On the other but, side of that coin, how do we then educate people into what all of these things actually are? Because a lot of people, like people have never heard of Tyrrell. Hmm? I mean, Tyrrell was massive on apparitions, you know, yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. that he's written and, yeah. and Holzer and, and people don't know who any of these people are. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean, yes, we've got Most Haunted to thank for getting it onto TV. Yes. But we've got these absolute legends that yeah. nobody knows about and their history has been forgotten. Yeah, it has, absolutely. Um, <coughs> the problem we've got is that TV are only interested obviously in ratings there's no of course mm -hmm. they are we know that and tv are only interested well hang on ba basically most tv bbc especially are really only interested in negatives <laughs> you know no you know why doesn't somebody just tell us every now and then how many people have survived coronavirus <sighs> hey rather than it's always 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 bad news and and scary stuff and so Unfortunately, any ghost show that's on has to be scary. Oh, absolutely. It's, well, got it's to be that sensationalism, and, isn't it? And, sensation, and the yeah. scaremongering. Yeah. So you try and create a documentary type program, which is what I've been working on, at, trying to do for years. Uh, they don't think that people would listen, but they're wrong. They're so wrong because, yeah. They're fascinated. Everybody now is so tied up with the ghost business fascinated by by ghosts they actually want to know more and, and mm. if, if tv would only realize the reality behind ghosts is actually more fascinating than the than the scary scooby-doo stuff yeah yeah but but they think people will switch off <laughs> because yeah. they think every show has got to be about an investigation and it doesn't have to be like that it can be documentary type that, that it can still be scary Especially if I'm in it, because I'm not being funny. If I'm in it, I'm wandering around a haunted location on my own. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, I don't think anybody no, wants to that. see me in the dark, Richard. So. <laughs> so, so, you know, so from that point of view, it it it, it can still be entertaining. But, you but, see, but they don't the understand public, the public investigations that 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 dave does and, and i obviously work with mm. dave um you mm. know we, we try and educate people as to what's happening and what the noises are and and yeah. and the equipment and what it actually does and if it is actually a credible form mm. of mm. ghost hunting equipment yeah. um yeah. which is pretty similar to what you do um when you're doing your ghost walks you know you tell people the actual stories yeah yeah exactly yeah uh, and you see for me I, I always say this that the only real ghost detector is you and your dog that's the only you know and, and, and that can't be proved because you, <laughs> your dog can't tell you what it's seen heard no. sensed or felt mm -hmm. and you can tell the world but they're not going to believe you because you can't prove it because no. it's all up there mm -hmm. in your perception um and so for me you know every time Oh, I mean, prime example, you know, so, oh, the temperature's dropped over, oh, oh my God. Look, and so you get your thermometer out, you know, your laser thermometer, zoop, zap the wall, and it records the temperature of, of the brick wall. Uh, okay, so that's not really going to prove us anything, is it? But the only way, the only real way of, of proving that the temperature's dropped there is if you've got some form of thermometer that's like a probe on a wire, and you dangle the probe, where the, the person said the temperature dropped and it actually says yeah the temperature has dropped by three degrees oh my god but the only thing that proves is that the temperature has dropped by three degrees it doesn't prove there's a ghost there no. so mm, yeah yeah that, that's something so for me I'm, I'm you see i i tend to very much go for the the old 
well, I don't know. Yeah, tables, glass, uh, crystals, um, that sort of stuff, rather, because electronic equipment, although when I say that, I'm now going to contradict myself, because, you know, K2s, for instance, um, the beauty of it is if, if, if a ghost is energy, which is what it is, you know, I'd like to change the name from ghost to energy, but if I did that, I don't think I'd have many people coming on an energy walk with me. So that wouldn't work very well. But that, that, that's what I've well. done. It probably would be work, better. Would it? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So we, the whole thing's energy. So surely the, the best and easiest way for, and I still refer to it as a ghost, the best way for a ghost to do something to let us know that it, what it's there if it wants to, is rather than trying to move a heavy object or something, or bang, tap, whistle, shout, but whatever, isn't it easier for it to influence another energy source, mm. which is a K2? Like, you know, how your batteries drain when you go in a haunted location, that sort of thing. You know, they're doing that. And so I, I am quite a believer in K2s. In, in other words, I'm saying, you know, a spirit could easily make those lights come on, damn sight easier than tapping on the ceiling in my opinion see I how does a ghost me. tap on the ceiling how does a ghost whistle when it, ain't got a vo when it hasn't got a voice box or a, a, a lips anymore <laughs> you know oh still trying to work that one out aren't we richard that's yes, the problem so, so am i so am i so am i <laughs> but you know it's uh it's it's the most fascinating subject probably on the planet at the moment it really is uh, we all want, and the reason is, is because we 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 so we're vastly going away from the religions that we knew of, we believed in before that we've been killing and slaughtering and torturing each other for thousands of years because I believe that my imaginary god is better than your imaginary god, um, or that my Santa Claus has got a red coat and yours wears a green one, so I'm going to torture and kill you because because mine's the right one, yours isn't. Um, we're getting away from that, uh, I'm very pleased to say, and we still want an answer. Mm. We still want to know that there's something else. So in a way, this could become the new religion. It's scary, but true. Yeah, isn't it? You know, because we, we, we all want to believe that something else happens after the material, after material death. Don't you think a lot of people have a difference on, on what they believe is after? Like, I know um, mm. people that will believe that a ghost is the consciousness of a person after they've passed away. Yeah. Um, but then there's also people who don't believe that that is the case and that it could be something as simple as PK. Yeah. And telepathy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, yeah. the theories are endless. And a recording. Only a recording held in the fabric of the building. Only a recording, yeah. Which I, I mean, believe makes up 60% of ghosts. But that would fit in with the history side of things too. It does. Yeah, it does very much so. But I, I'm a huge believer in, in the, the consciousness, ego, spirit, mind, the mind. And I think that the mind is separate to the brain. I think the mind is all over you not not in your brain i think the brain is the hard drive the memory source uh and i think the mind well, is that, somewhere that's else a, that's a classic section in in psychology that the, the computational oh, theory you see I, yeah. I don't know anything about psychology but that's my yeah. view and and i think the, the the proof so in other words um and it's all to do with ele electromagnetism elect electricity uh energy that's you um and i believe that it's actually your ego personal personal you you is 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 all over you right and, and the bit of proof i think i've got is is the the stuff that's now coming out because of transplants human transplants yes and, and people are um because you see again i think it's it's all to do with water and i actually think that water plays a bigger part in the memory side of things than than my stone tape theory where it's stored in the it's all sorry it's all to do with silica which is not only in in brick brick buildings clay stone buildings quartz crystal but also in water 
uh, and that's the, the recording probably the memory side of it if you like that holds a memory um, and remember that up here this brain up here is made up this memory source is 85 percent water water yeah water. well you see that's the other thing though we don't actually know the capabilities of the human brain no, although we've done lots of there's loads of studies and so much data yeah but we but do we still not know capabilities in one side do we we haven't got a clue still and and yet you know we think that that this is the all encompassing this is the the it's more than th th this controls i don't think mm. it does i think it's controlled within the mind within the body the mind which is a separate entity to the material body totally and that's why i think that now when people have a heart transplant or a liver transplant that they actually develop characteristics from the donor i've been reading about this um mm. and it's it's real um there's quite a few cases uh was that there was a, a lady who had a heart and lungs transplant and after afterwards she did she developed a craving for for uh, beer uh, and chicken nuggets uh, and they they actually did i don't know how they managed to but they found out that the uh the donor was an 18 year old biker uh who who's drank beer like nobody's business and his favorite food was mcdonald's chicken nuggets <laughs> and, and you know what's that all about that transfers <laughs> from one person to another see yeah i would um that that would be fascinating like i've read stories on it so and mm. for me i i hate chicken nuggets you <laughs> Right. don't can't stand yeah. them so you know if i was to all of a sudden have some sort of a transplant <gasps> and then start eating chicken nuggets that would be huge would would you not think what on earth is going on here but does that mean a part of their consciousness mind psyche uh ego mm -hmm. a part of them travels with parts of the body or but or then... is it in the in the water is it the memory that's in the water and the, throw into cool. the mix on that, Richard, the fact yes. that most transplants, the, the the donor isn't actually confirmed dead when the no, organs are taken out. No, so no, that no, is that's... still a living organ. Oh, 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 yes. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you for that. He likes that. that. Now, that's a very, very <laughs> valid point. That is. So in other words, the mind, as I kept saying, the personality actually is still within the body yeah and a part a tiny part a, a memory a glimmer of that person transfers wow to someone else in the same way be careful how i deal deal with this one <coughs> in the same way of course that a part of the father passes through into the baby into the embryo doesn't it through Absolutely. water through water See, it's crazy, isn't it? No, it's fascinating. But nobody's you, doing anything. Nobody's nobody's researching it. No, because they're too busy running around. She's she, she screaming. Is there anybody there? Hashtag yeah, team. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I need help. Well, you know, they can tell that from psychiatric <laughs> for a start. Um, but I, I need help from science, but they're not interested. Well, what about, I mean, the SPR and places like that? Yeah, you see, I'm not a member. I'm not a member of anything. I'm not a member, Why are member you of not ASAP. A member, Richard? No, I don't know. I mean, funnily enough, I've been asked to do, go down and do a lecture for ASAP in November uh, in London, uh, which I'm going to do. But I, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm too busy being a voice in the wilderness out here. I, it's time I, I became a member and started to get active I because think some, so. someone might be able to help me a bit more. See, this is it. I mean, I, in the SPR alone, you've got um, barristers, you've got um, professors, you've got yeah. you, there's so many different people that all coming yeah. together. Yeah. yeah, does pose for some amazing conversations. Yeah, exactly. Without I mean, them. they'd probably poo-poo most of what I said, but I, I don't think they would Not because I'm I'm just looking at the reality side. So, you know, and if as I've said so often, you know, most most big um what's the word i don't know discoveries have been made by amateurs mm. no doubt about it you know just hitting on something by mistake yeah uh 
and, and the same thing applies with this business this ghost business but we need we really need to get away from the scare you see the trouble with ghosts is that it's all hollywood uh mr james edgar Allan poe ghost stories scary got to be scary we love to be scared but there's yeah. another side to it and yet i'm frightened of them and it's stupid and yet i'm telling everybody all the time preaching to everybody the profession of a ghost if it had one would not be to scare you they're not they're not it's not it's it's and exactly i think that is the case you know you're preaching what what you believe is true you know these, these entities whatever you want to call them are not there to scare you they are not there to harm you um nine times out of ten there's usually a reason or a story or something yes. behind it yeah there's a reason they're still here and it ain't to roam the earth as a demonic soul terrifying children at the foot of the bed at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> clanking chains and going <laughs> there's, there's more to it but until we break away from that and we won't break away from it because we love to be scared it's we love the ghost train you know or whatever it is. situation isn't it yeah it is it's a difficult one and that's when, why I tend to be out there a bit, sort of, you know, voice in the wilderness, you know. And one of the problems is, you know, oh, it's that silly man off most haunted. You know? <laughs> that I don't, I definitely don't think that's the case at all. And that's just speaking um, for myself. I'm pretty sure that there's lots of people yeah. that agree with me. But yeah. uh, you don't, you're not just the silly man off most haunted. You know, you're educational. You've got that information. You're willing to share it. And yes. you're as honest yes. as the day is long. Mm, yeah. But you see, I'm most haunted. You see, I, I got so frustrated because, oh, for instance, we're all, I don't know, we're in the cellar or whatever. And the door slams shut. Bang! Yvette screams. I, I tend to run off a bit because I'm, I'm frightened of ghosts, right? Okay. Um, you, you, you see, people at home, that's great because, you know, people were having a most haunted party at home. You know, the, the beers, the lagers were there. It's like the World Cup, you know. The pizzas had come in, the neighbours had come down because they hadn't got sky. And they're all sat around, the curtains drawn and the candles lit and everybody loved it. And Absolutely. then it slammed up, this door slammed shut. Everybody screams crescendo. You jump off your sofa at home, it makes you jump great that was fantastic that's the scare but unfortunately what happened next you see was that well that was a scary ghost that slammed the door shut always a scary one mm. and 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 i all i wanted to do was say let me go and have a look and see if someone's left the window open but you always did that well. yeah but they often tried to stop me doing it because it was a scary ghost because what i wanted to do tick the normal boxes right and if we've got a box without a tick, then we really have to start investigating. Stop, never mind the script, never mind it's, it's Most Haunted Live, stop what we're doing and investigate what's happened because there isn't an explanation for this one. There wasn't, Stuart wasn't stood behind the door. Um, it wasn't a windy night. Nobody had got it on a piece of string. And you know, we really can't explain why this door slammed shut. So we really need to stay and do some serious investigation. And Joe Public would have loved that. Oh, but it never quite happened. I mean, never happened. one of those lives that you did do, the most haunted lives, I did it exactly as you've just described. So I ordered a takeaway. Yeah. I got my bottle yeah. of WKD or whatever it was. Yeah, Mad yeah, Dog 50-50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It could have been anything back then. <laughs> <laughs> Lights off, candles on, all alone. Yeah. Yeah. Watching Most Haunted Live. It was yeah. epic. It was a Halloween one because I hope my friend isn't watching, but I was I was actually bridesmaid for her on her wedding that day and I pulled a sickie and went home early so I could watch Most Haunted. So <laughs> if you're watching, I'm sorry. Oh, I went home. So entertaining. Oh, so without a doubt. Well, I remember sitting there watching it and as I say, you know, I was all by myself and yeah. something happened on the live, but as it happened on the live, we had a power outage in our area. So all the street lights went oh, out at exactly the same time. And I just remember sitting at home and being like yeah. it's coming from my telly. <laughs> it's coming from my telly. It's gonna yeah, get exactly. me. A lot of people thought that. A lot of people thought just that. Um and uh, who knows 
who knows you know energy but but it was tremendous it was you know well done well, a, lot well, of, a, a, lot of, a lot of the audience were pulled in, weren't they? They were pulled into the investigations because they did when they did the lives, they had a live audience as well. And then the, yeah. the people in the audience were going, well, I can see a shadow. I've seen a shadow up there or I've just heard yeah. something bang over there. Yeah. It oh, was, it was tremendous. It was tremendous. I understand why they never seem to they never put, they never repeat the lives on TV, do they? It's hard because they were good they, they got again like everything else they got ridiculous when you're talking about seven day live then you know you've got to make up an awful lot of things to happen for seven days but the one day one day two days they were good they were yes. you know it was Back great day, fascinating have you got a favorite place that you you've actually visited oh well my favorite place on the planet and i have visited is the tower of london it's got to be the most haunted place there is you know there's more history and torture and death and execution and everything that's gone on in, in the tower of london than anywhere else i think on the planet well no that's not true obviously places like belson and auschwitz and that, that's dreadful but really mm -hmm. the tower of london with its history and heritage and stories that has to be has to be the must do place you know on the bucket list which, which is not possible you know the i don't think we'll ever be able to investigate but i have been and i did i actually was thrown out of the tower of london Mo most people get thrown into the tower of london <laughs> right, okay you can't leave that there you're gonna have yeah, to tell the full I, story I, now richard <laughs> I, I was thrown out of i was doing we were doing i was also thrown out of westminster abbey the same day um banned from highgate cemetery <laughs> we, we were doing ghosts of london dvd uh, video as it was then uh, uh, uh and uh, we, we, and i do tend to I, I i try and ask permission where i can <laughs> to go in and film but if 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 it's not forthcoming then we tend to go in and film anyway <laughs> um and i was uh, went into tower london and uh i was filming around uh tower green where, where the executions took place, where the buildings uh, took place in the middle of the Tower of London, where Anne Boleyn and various other people were beheaded. And I'm standing there doing the story of the ghost of what was possibly Anne Boleyn uh, haunting the And all of a sudden, this yeoman of the guard, this beef eater, comes up to the side of me <laughs> and says, excuse me, sir, can I, can I ask what you're doing? I said, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing some filming because the cameraman was you know, always there. And he says, um, have you got permission? to do this i said well yeah i asked the lady outside <laughs> asked the lady at the table paying in desk <laughs> and he said oh no no that's not good enough i'm afraid you have to come to the press office and you have to fill in the phone you have to do this you have to. i said i said well i'd love to but i really haven't got time because i actually got i've got an appointment with jack the ripper in Whitechapel. In <laughs> <half an hour. laughs> we beat a very hasty retreat and this voice shouts after me anyway there's no proof it's amberlin's ghost and off we went um, <laughs> so i was thrown out unfortunately uh and it is on it is on it is on ghosts of london uh it's, it's, that was good but yeah that's got to be the place it's, it really has but other than that for me one of the scariest places i've ever been to was was the queen mary on long at long beach with the incident in the cabin 340 that was that was that that frightened me more than anywhere yeah because I, I spent the night in the you see prime example you see so when, when i when i'm off when we're off filming doing ghosts of wherever it is if we're away for more than one more than a day then, then i always try and find a haunted hotel or a haunted inn to stay overnight absolutely because it's haunted and because we've got cameras with us and and you never know you never know something might happen in the middle of the night so we always put a camera on for at least mm. like an hour in the room where i am you know if they'll let me have the haunted bedroom which happens quite a few times mm. um so i couldn't understand the fact that we were actually on the queen mary for for three weeks and there's this notoriously haunted cabin cabin 340 which both derek and david wells picked up the same to a child that was actually um murdered murdered by its mother in the cabin and the number of people because it's a hotel 
obviously mm -hmm. now and the number of of guests that have fled that that room cabin 340 and insisted on either leaving or having another room so much so that they don't use that room that cabin that's it it's, em it's not empty it's got a rickety old bed in it a, a table with a table lamp on it the, the bathroom and toilet don't work there's no carpet and and it's just empty but we were allowed to film in it obviously which we filmed more than once and i couldn't get my head around the fact that we were we were on that boat for three weeks and nobody was going to spend the night in cabin three four hour. i mean it's just stupid you know so of course i made a suggestion that's what you're you know. there for yeah and so of course everyone points the fingers at me <laughs> and I said, no, no way no 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 it was just an idea I, i'm not doing it no way <laughs> yeah yeah you are you are yeah. we're going to get them to make the bed up for you no uh and i mean it, i was i'll tell you how it i mean, basically we had to wait for a security guy to come and let us in the room the, but they they have the maid so they made the bed up for me um and they made sure there was a light bulb <laughs> in the table lamp by the bed that was about it um but it was about one o'clock before anyone came and i went obviously early to 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 wait for the guy who didn't turn up and i was so bothered that i actually didn't even i didn't even stay in the corridor where cabin 340 was that's how bothered i was and then the, anyway then the security guy comes unlocks the door and i'm thinking oh, i'm going on my own you know and then luckily for me i suppose john gilbert who's the sound guy big sound guy that, that was there came along with a bottle of whiskey <laughs> And a, and a tumbler and some uh, um, sparkling water. Well, nobody actually saw the size of the tumbler of whiskey that I had before I dared go and spend the night in cabin three four zero. Um, so I was, you know, I'd, 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 that's all I had, just one whiskey. But anyway, so I settled down for the night. And Kieran O'Keefe had got his um, laptop there, uh, filming the whole thing. It was on a loop or whatever you call it, and it was filming all night. And oh well the, what, what happened to me was about half past four five o'clock in the morning there's this crescendo of a noise inside my cabin i i, I mean it's you, you you know you know if you're at home you're and the burglar alarm goes off in the middle of the night jesus christ you know the, the fear the, the 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 you know the crescendo of the noise. well this was far worse than that because it was in the room and it was it was this metallic strangest strangest noise crashing around the room um it found fright me to death it really did frighten me um and i well i that was it i gave up and went back to my wife who was in our cabin you know i'd had enough of that I tell you um so that was the end of it then then that was it anyway i get when we get home from america i get a phone call from yvette saying you you need to see you want to you need to hear what we've heard because without me knowing, I was actually gone, fast asleep, and about two hours earlier, you hear footsteps going round my bed. Now, here we go, tick the normal boxes. Now, first thing I'd done was I'd locked the door from the inside with the key, and I'd turned the key halfway so nobody could stick a pencil in the keyhole or something a knitting need i don't know push the key out put a put a newspaper under the door key drops down you slide it underneath and you can unlock the door from outside because you know, i i knew full well that everything that happened on most haunted wasn't real of course it wasn't and i wasn't having any chance to get any so I, I got the keyhole so nobody could get in <clears throat> uh second thing you hear footsteps okay well perhaps it was someone walking past the door in the corridor silly o'clock in the morning well the difference is that the queen mary is a hotel mm -hmm. a very plush hotel and its carpets are very deep and the whole of the corridor is carpeted heavily carpeted with very very thick very expensive carpet but my cabin had got no carpet it was bare it was like concrete some form of concrete on the floor and the, the fact is that the footsteps you hear are are not on carpet they're on they're in my cabin there's no doubt there is no doubt about it then you hear this child's voice twice go mummy 
I think I remember that. Yeah, I, remember, I, I do remember that now. Yeah. Jesus. But I didn't know anything about mm. that. Well, I'd have been gone a lot earlier if I'd heard that. But I was fast asleep. Fast asleep while it was happening. And it wasn't until we got back to England they started editing the stuff that they found this on, on, on Kieran's computer. And Kieran's computer, that's the other one. Because at the end of the day, we know full well that Kieran is not the guy that, you know, he, he disprove it like me. Well, he's a psychologist, it. isn't he, Kieran? Exactly, so. exactly. And he was blown away with it as well. Absolutely blown away with it. That was that was something. That was. We've got Kieran in a few weeks, haven't we, Dave? I've got Kieran yeah. on next week. Yeah. Oh, have you? Well, I know. Yeah. Oh, great stuff. We should yeah, have done a joint one. Yeah, well, 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 what yeah, we'll do is it is the most started reunion in a few weeks. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, a few years ago, it never came to anything because I things things happened that were beyond my control, which stopped me doing any more about it. But we were forming a group called All Most Haunted. <laughs> All X. <laughs> almost almost haunted all most haunted but with everybody apart from carl and yvette and that, we were going to do a convention but it nothing happened nothing came of it still richard, might do it one day richard i think we need to get together on this yeah <laughs> you good, wouldn't it almost haunted it would all be hilarious most, most haunted. absolutely all that those would that be... sacked, fired bullied out of bit of oh, shut up richard <laughs> it would be it would be absolutely hilarious yeah, well, it? hey yeah i mean that's, well we, we can't actually do the show without i mean you've already mentioned derek bless him um yes. now derek is is no longer with us sadly yeah, um yeah. but he was an absolute true gent wasn't he he was indeed god yeah yeah i miss him i miss him terribly i really do shut i can't be he, he was the guy was larger than life and and you, you can't, nobody can really believe that derek's gone is this you know they just can't he was larger than life um but uh, yeah i had some good times with derek i worked with him a lot we did the show of course you know psychic science show, uh, which was fantastic people loved it he was a great guy sadly missed sadly absolutely missed. And another mm -hmm. one that's that's been taken too soon. Um, Dave, I'm going to let yeah. you chat away just why I get the questions because I've seen quite a few questions come up in the chat room, so I'm just going to grab uh, them. Okay. So you chat away, guys. I'm not being ignorant. Sorry. Not at all. She, she, she is. So uh, is that the most experience you've had with the spirit is when you did the Queen Mary? Oh, well, no, I've seen a ghost, as you know, at Derby Jones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, seen a ghost, heard a ghost. Uh, when I was in the Territorial Army, a uh, ghost of a young lad dying of his wounds that was nothing more than a recording mm. held in the fabric of the building. There's no doubt about that. That was a record. So I've actually, I suppose I've experienced, I've, you know, the, the ghost I saw in Derby Jail, I am convinced was spirit and soul, an entity, an intelligence, um, so, you know, real. Uh, um, the one I heard, as I said the soldier dying was nothing more than a recording i think held in yeah, the fabric no. of the building uh and then i also traveled uh, with a ghost that was my father uh that i never saw that was apparently a guy uh that i was following saw a figure in my passenger seat uh but there was nobody in the passenger seat and it was going down to funnily enough as, as army again royal military academy at sandhurst where dad used to come with me uh and this guy thought i'd travel come down with my wife because he's i said well, sorry no i'm on my own he said, no no I, I i kept you in my mirror all the way through the army camp and there was someone sitting in your passenger seat and of course he put two and two together hmm. and and thought my wife had come because my dad was dead and he knew my dad was dead my dad had died in the february and i was driving down to sandhurst in in july uh and he knew my dad as well so he knew he knew who was dead but so he obviously had to put two and two together and come up with with five <laughs> you know uh your wife's gone who's blonde and five foot and half an inch but my dad was 83 and and very gray um well, that was amazing that was a, quite a good one that was um but he my dad knew i was trying to ghost always knew i was trying to ghost. he was the one that used to come into me in the middle of the night when i was terrified of having nightmares and all this nonsense um so as, as i've been told in the past you know he's around me but he'd never show himself because he knows you're frightened <laughs> just yeah. stupid 
um but this other guy saw him in his mirror so i don't know that was something so yeah that's 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 about it that's oh don't you know no things ha lots of things happened on most haunted that i can't explain mm -hmm. genuine because we were in haunted locations so it's, it's probably inevitable is it not that things mm -hmm. are going to happen there was some back in the day as well there was some um renowned locations as well wasn't there oh boy oh yes yes we did some fantastic places and that was the privilege as well of being allowed to go to these places and, and not only that but to see the bits that joe public never saw yes. mm. go down into the cellars up into the attics into so-and-so's room and the places that weren't open to the public mm -hmm. we got to see all of, we had the run of the place which and some of them were private mm. properties as well that we went to i mean some of the early episodes were really good because they were uh convincing and they were some of it was real oh god yes, so know that about that but they, they seemed to got to a, a desperate stage when they were trying to do all different things keep keep the suspense going by yes, doing right. strings yeah. knives this that and the other and getting pulled upstairs yeah uh, and i think that's what spoiled it yeah, it did yeah but of course remember that it's labeled as an entertainment mm. program and so they they can do what they want if you know what i mean but it, it it's not fair to hood, hoodwink people in, no. in a subject no. oh, say, hang on <laughs> oh hang on hang on how long has the church been hood hoodwinking people <laughs> hey <laughs> two thousand years and the rest go on the rest Swap keep going yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah yeah but right isn't it? so there's nothing new is there well so, what about your, your the table tipping and the, and the the ouija boards that went on was that real as well or was that staged uh good question I, i've just seen that i've only got 20 percent left on my phone <laughs> well that's all right we're right for a bit i think um what was i going to say yeah uh, no i mean a lot of it was so real there's no i i can't vouch for all of it i don't know but some of the stuff that i was involved with i know was real um oh doggy's turned up uh, yeah. one of the best one of, one of the best was was bottle widden castle mm. when uh the 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 only unfortunate thing about it was that it was me stuart and carl which always i hate to say shine put a bit of a bad light on things sometimes but honest to god that table shot across that cellar twice at me and 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 there's no no possible way that they could they couldn't do it they could not do that that was frighten me to death that that was real and then the other wow that i don't think anybody seems to have uh, need to look at it again actually it was at taunton castle and they sent me upstairs which i didn't like doing on my own into the attics of this this cottage or something that was in the grounds of taunton castle and we were going to do some uh well see if we can find a table up there and there was there was a metal table a fold fold up metal table in the attic with loads of other junk up there and I got it and I opened it up. So I opened it up. I found it. And and then they came upstairs to and again it was the three of us, Charles Stewart and me. And we all got our fingers on this table. And I swear to you guys that for the only time ever in my life, that table lifted itself off the ground. It levitated. It did it twice. And as soon as it went down and I I got over the initial mm -hmm. it, it, euphoria of what happened first thing i did two things i did i made that i made i had a look in their sleeves to make sure they hadn't got perspex see-through rulers yeah you know what i mean put it in your sleeve and you can make something yet yeah, they hadn't and i actually checked their fingers to see if they got super glue or something on the fingers honestly to make sure i was ticking them and, and i i still don't know they did not fake it it lifted off the floor so the only and it was a metal table and not a wooden table it was incredible that was what i'm really good emma ask richard what happened to him in his bedroom at craig and Oss castle oh boy that was a good one yeah i love craig and Oss. craig and Oss, as they call it um yeah i um again i'm afraid i had, had a drink with it. me and me and phil wyman had um got lost we went to the wrong the wrong village in in wales and we turned up late uh and so but the bar was still open so we had a, we had a drink uh had a pint and then off we went to bed and um i don't know sometimes during the night 
I, I found myself stood up by the wall of my bedroom as if there was a door there or something. I don't know what I was doing there. And I woke up thinking, what are you doing, what are you doing here? Which was bizarre, strange. Anyway, I'm up. I might as well go for a wee while I'm there. So I went into the ensuite. <laughs> and as I came out of the ensuite, I, I, it was it was just starting to get light. And I don't think I'd drawn the curtains. And I could clearly see that I thought there was someone lying across the bed. A female. Wait a minute. I was alone, by the way. Um, and, oh, my God, the shock. You can imagine it, can't you? The shock of coming out of the toilet and see, seeing someone lying at an angle. And the first thing I did, you know, even at this time, tick them off. And I went up to the bed because I thought, oh, I know. I've, it's the way I've got out of bed. Because I, I didn't remember getting out of bed, by the way, because I, all I found myself was stood up against mm -hmm. this wall. So it's the bedclothes. It's the way I've pulled the bedclothes off. They're at an angle which gives the impression of being so. And I'm standing there going, pu push it. To s and the bedclothes weren't. The bedclothes were. I'd got out of bed through the sheets without folding them back. And there was nobody on the bed. There was nothing there. But I swear I saw something lying across the bed. Someone. A female. I'd, I'd got this. It was a female. I thought my luck was in. <laughs> no, anyway. <laughs> So the but wife's I, not listening, is she? No, she's not. She's not. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, uh, no, she's not <laughs> <laughs> So I, anyway, so that's the end of that. Until next day. Anyway, there's this lady that comes on as a witness. She's a witness. She she was there during the war when it was a, um, uh, God, TB uh, um, hospital. And she was, she was, um, she, something had happened to her. And she was telling me that I didn't know anything about this. She says, uh, it's so-and-so, room number so-and-so now, and room number so-and-so next door. And I said, yeah, that's, I'm in that room. I'm in that room. And she said, well, you know that uh, that was, don't you? Originally, when Adelina Patti, the Victorian lady who sang for Queen Victoria, lived there, she was a Catholic. She says, that was her private chapel. That's yeah. where her body was laid, laid in state after she died in that room you're in. Oh my god. I said, right. Okay. Well, guess what happened to me? I told her. She said, Oh, well, yeah. Well, she says that really what happened to me was in, in the room next door because my room was next door. And there were two young ladies, uh, nurses, trainee nurses, in the room that you're in. And in the middle of the night, the two of them were banging on my door, frightened to death because something had happened in that bedroom. And they were banging on the door and they spent the night in my bedroom on the floor and they'd that something had happened that had woken them up and they'd seen strange twinkly lights coming from the ceiling down to the floor and seemed to disappear through the floor and they said that room's haunted well that's the room i was in but when it was adelina patty's chapel it was one room but since they made it into a hotel they put stud walls up Oh, sorry, much long ago, during the war even, her room was one side and these girls was the other, which was my room. But that was incredible. Um, I still don't, still can't explain it. But I saw a woman lying an angle across my bed. <laughs> That's shocking. Or um, was it Adelina Patti's? I don't know what it was. Well, it was interesting. It frightened me anyway. Um, Wayne Seedon would like, well, he's got a couple of questions actually. Um, he says, and, and I don't even believe this is going to happen, Richard, let alone you're actually going to do what this question says. Um, so the question is, when you retire, will you have a successor? That's, no. No, I won't. That's a good one, isn't it? That's and you're not, no, you're not going to retire one. either, are you? I'll never retire. <laughs> I, 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 no. I enjoy it too. I enjoy what I'm doing too much. Uh, but I am enjoying lockdown. Because I'm not doing anything like that at the moment. Well, I'm just writing at the moment. But well, no, we're I, all I, enjoying it. Yeah, I I haven't got a successor. No. Well, we're oh, all enjoying dear. it because, like, we're seeing you more often now, Richard. Because Love you it. are you are live <laughs> quite often now, aren't you? Yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. So we right. The other question from Wayne was, how do you fit it all in with the walks and etc.? So you write oh. in your your lectures, your university school visits, etc. How do you fit all that in with everything? I just seem, I just seem to. 
and I, I just seem to do it um because obviously night time is the main time for business business isn't it you know what i mean and a lot of it's at night i must be honest with you, my wife's a bit fed up of being left alone all the time because um. i'm sometimes out three and four nights a week and then saturday nights i'm off doing night vigils for somebody somewhere or the jail and um so that's why i'm loving the lockdown so much you know i'm not and the wife obviously is she is there's no doubt about it and that she said i'm not as stressed either <laughs> see it must but, be stressful uh, though trying to fit i know you said that everything yes, just fits, it but you it have to make it yeah yeah that's true and i've got so many different things on at the moment at the moment i'm just about to set up a uh i'm re-establishing derby heritage center online online so how's that going to work well it's going to be or well, i mean one of the things is, um, we're doing is it's going to be called everything derby and it's mm. going to be all stuff to the, everything did you know fascinating stuff establishing uh contact with the 23 derbies in america that are all named after this one uh all sorts of stuff sell it and also creating derby souvenirs that nobody does because uh, there aren't any out there t-shirts stuff oh come on all sorts of stuff so i'm working on that as well as everything else and then alberta would like to know yeah if you're going to go to ireland at any point yes very much so fascinated with it i love i love ireland uh and i i desperately want to do ghosts of southern ireland uh dvd and streaming you know because so, uh, i've done ghosts of northern ireland but I want to do Ghosts of, and I also want to do some events, uh, certainly at Lep Castle, which is my favourite, favourite castle, uh, most haunted castle. Um, love it. Yeah, yeah, love Ireland. Can't wait to go back. Um, you, men you, you mentioned a place in Ireland. And I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I love Ireland too. Um, I'm with you on the switch, Ed. But my favourite place is a little, a little place in the middle of nowhere. It's called Lysian House. Right. No, I don't know that. Lithian. Lithian. Uh, the Liffey. The River uh, Liffey. L-I-S-S-I-A-S. Yeah, Lithian. Yeah. yeah. Um, so not many people know about it, but it is fabulous. I highly recommend going. Really? Is it oh. open to the public or, or...? Yes. Yeah, it's open to the public um, and they do allow um, investigations. In fact, I can probably um, put you in That's touch good. with somebody. For that location so sounds good sounds good amazing and titanic dry dock as well i've done that oh boy um, yeah. love that but then yeah. that's the history isn't it it's the history yes that it's the that. history behind it as well yeah that's what you tie the two together and you've got success exactly i'm just trying to make sure i'm not missing anybody's questions i'm so sorry i don't want anybody right. to fucking kill that's me fine. for missing the car <laughs> <laughs> could just say hi to sean our uh, paranormal investigators in our team. If you can see, the, if you can see the chat room, Dave, can you just give a shout out to everybody that's joined us tonight? Because I know that Richard, you've got quite a few, um, quite a few of your fans and friends in there. So I don't want to miss Hooray. any. Yeah, there's Alberta, there's Marie Davis, Jeanette Marie Hodgkinson, uh, Chris Hunt, who's now just gone, I think. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, Bob Hunt. Did I say Marie Davis? Gina Sugden. Hello, Gina. <laughs> yeah, Gina's on. <laughs> Tracy Jane Thomas. Brent and Emma. There's been quite a few people on tonight, which Bernie is Mather, really good. Roberts, Joanne Spence. Nick. Hi, Nick. Entering the unknowns watching. Hi, Sophie. M. Hall. Alberta, Sean, Nick. Wayne. Hi, Wayne. I just yeah, don't want to I'm so sorry. Right. If we've missed anyone, we, we do apologise if we've missed anyone. But with with uh, hello to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, yeah, what what Been plans? Have you got the, what plans have you got for the future, Richard? Me? Oh God, mm -hmm. where do I begin? Well, obviously this people's ghost book that I think people you know about. You know, that's your your stories basically, uh, yeah. which we're we just finishing editing and sorting out at the moment storage is still coming in that's that's going to be something good we're, we're just working on on doing some more streaming uh of the dvds i need to do because uh, i haven't finished the ghost tour of great britain i've got quite a few count i've not done essex i haven't done that. i haven't done kent i haven't done uh oh it's quite a few 
counties I haven't done, and I would I would like to finish to have the whole country done on, collection. on 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 yeah. Uh, so I've got some more of that to do. Uh, this this Derby Heritage thing could be quite good. You know, I'm working on a TV program at the moment called Execution: A Medley of Butchery and Torture. That sounds awesome. Because that's mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, that, but of course, it's all on hold. You see, everything's on hold at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm also rewriting Derby: The Crossroads of History, the book that came out in '95 that's out of print. I'm redoing that because I've learned rather a lot since 1995. Um, and I'm for Halloween. I'm bringing out um, Ghosts of Greater Manchester book. Uh -huh which is going to be quite good because so many of the most haunted programs because they lived in greater manchester so many of them happen to be in greater manchester so i've got some quite interesting stories to tell about that mm. that'll be quite good there isn't one there actually isn't a book on ghosts of greater manchester which i find incredible it's a big area it's mm, huge, huge yeah. area. It's huge wigan Bury, bolton manchester oh boy you know it's a it's a so how can that just be missed it's, it is it's been i mean don't go wrong there's, there's, i'm sure there's a bolton ghost book and there's a berry ghost book and a, but the actual whole encompassing greater manchester you know is quite amazing but, but manchester city center on its own the mm. history in oh, there yeah. is phenomenal it is absolutely so uh, richard i've been that. told to ask you i can't see who's put the comment there's no name but it says connor is asking if he can take over when you retire Oh yeah, Connor. Yeah, why not? Somebody needs to. <laughs> oh, there we go. And on that note, we best let you go, actually, Richard, because oh, I'm love. very conscious nice. of the fact that you've got next to no battery left on your phone. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Well done, you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll just disappear, won't I? Yeah, no, I was <laughs> just thinking you, you can't have much longer left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, guys, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. It's been we, an we, absolute pleasure, Richard. We must talk some more. Are you still at Derby Uni, uni then? Uh, yeah, but I'm st obviously studying from home. Um, yeah, of course. So everything's yeah. online now, but yeah. yeah. All right, we, ne we need to talk some more. We do, we do yeah. need to talk, Richard. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We're going to get a... a most started reunion with you, Kieran O'Keefe, and Sarah and Phil Wyman. Oh, yeah, because we've got yeah, Sarah yeah. and oh, Phil yeah. coming on as well. Yeah, oh, we've got yeah, all coming good. on. So, yeah, that'll we'll be great. One later yeah. in the year. Mm. Only two, please. Yeah, we'll do a catch up. Um, everybody Thanks, watching us tonight, thank you so, so much for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure. If I didn't read any of your questions out, I really, really do apologize. But I'm sure if you message Richard, he won't mind answering them. Of course not. Far from it. Anybody wants to get in touch with me, it's Richard Felix at gmx.com. Richard Felix at gmx.com. And the website, I might as well put the plug in, eh, is richardfelix.co.uk. And you've got Felix as well. Oh, me net Felix, yes, yeah. the DVDs. Don't forget net Felix. <laughs> hey. I, as soon as we've we've ended, I'll um I'll add some links into the chat. Awesome. So if anybody wants any of your purchases from your books, etc., they'll they'll know where to get them. But I will put that all in there for you. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Richard. Again. Well, thank you, everyone at home. Thanks. See you next Thanks. week. Bye. Bye. Bye.